Right then, ladies and gentlemen, I figured this being the new year, assuming I uploaded this on the right day, I'd take this opportunity to explain to you how I accidentally fell into this little old life of mine. And I'm not going to start from the beginning of me being a little wee little poo babby. That'd be... that'd be very boring, there's not that much to tell, and that's not all too much of a fun story. However, me accidentally falling into YouTube is an interesting story. I'll go ahead and start even from before the beginning. You see, I, like many, was leaving school and had no idea what I wanted to do in life. Not a cock-fondling, fuck-giggling clue. In terms of an actual profession, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that making people laugh was what I enjoyed. Even if that was just regurgitating jokes I heard from a TV show the previous night. Even if it's just putting on a Monty Burns voice or a fat bastard impression from Austin Powers. It isn't anything. Anything that made people giggle from their gullets was something that made me happy. That was it. Making other people happy made me happy. Basic translation, but I didn't know how to do that other than the dumb giggle laughs, so that's what I did mostly. But funnily enough, there wasn't a degree available in Funny Man, so couldn't pick that. However, a close friend of mine advised that I uh, do a games degree, or B-Tech, or whatever the fuck it was at that point. So I went ahead and did that. However, at the same time, in my spare time, which, you know, being a student, you have a fucking lot of, and especially seeing as I had just left school and I had, like, the summer break, I, uh, I kept myself entertained on Xbox Live <laughs> through an internet connection that was not mine that belonged to my neighbours. Didn't even own my own internet connection at the age of 16. I was a, uh, <laughs> very privileged child. Bullshit. But, um... Yeah, I was on Xbox Live, and whenever friends weren't available because they had a more interesting lives than me by actually leaving the house and doing shit, I'd just keep myself entertained by A, playing games, and B, plugging in the headset and putting on fake accents and voices. Why? I don't know. Why I needed to do that, I'll, I'll never know. And that's what I did. That's what I did a lot. Be it me doing a Monty Burns impression, or a Scottish, Scouse, or American accent, I'd bump into a lot of people. Most not friendly. It's Xbox Live, and most people just plug in those bloody headsets to be aggressive and take their frustrations out on other people that they're never gonna meet. Welcome to online anonymity. But on my digital journey, I ended up bumping into a bunch of Irish people. Kids, guys, things. We had this conversation at some point, we, we we never could remember or settle on what game it was we met each other on. I always thought it was Gears of War 2, they always thought it was Halo, or maybe it's the other way around and I've completely got that wrong, but either way, one of those games bumped into a bunch of Irish guys. Ended up liking them. You know, was for Xbox Live friends, they ended up being quite friendly and enjoyable to be around, so it's was like, well, fuck it, I'll add these people as friends and socialize with them on the, on the brainwaves. However... Here's something you probably realized. I was doing a fake voice. I, I, I was using an American accent while, while befriending these people. Not my smartest move. However, my smartest move did come quite swiftly after because, you know, the simple solution would have been to just come clean and say, oh, I was just putting on a silly voice. It's still me. You know, it's, it's just a silly voice. I'm English. You should like me, right? Same personality and everything. That'd be easy to explain. I mean, it'd be a, it'd be a little weird, but you know, it's, it's normal, it's Xbox Live, you fuck around. You know what I decided to do? Nothing. I didn't just let them assume that I was American when they asked me because my fucking bio said I was in England. I, I was that much of an idiot. You just come up with a story of, yeah, family moved country and shit, and awkwardly explaining away these things for, uh... No other reason that I didn't think it would be a good idea to just say I was putting on a voice. You know how long that lasted? Multiple years. Two to three, I believe. Of them thinking I was American. Why? I, d I don't know. There's a point to all this, don't worry. Could you see, those fine Irish individuals ran a channel between the four or five of them? There were a lot of them to begin with, but it basically boiled down to just two of them doing most of the stuff. But I believe there was like five of them involved at some point. But either way, they, uh... Specifically, Mark, of those individuals, uh, advised that I get involved in YouTube. Why? Because I had a good voice. The, the irony being that the voice he was saying that was good wasn't actually mine. Because <laughs> I was still doing the American accent. But uh, he, he kept advising 
insisting that I get involved in YouTube in some manner. And I, I was just a poor boy from a poor family, and I couldn't really afford any of the things that would be required to do it. I didn't even have a HDTV at this point. I'm not kidding. I did not have a <laughs> HDTV at the age of 16. I mean, I'm not trying to say that's the most prioritized thing in life, but put it into perspective how little <laughs> I had as a kid. Although, we always managed to somehow have a gaming console, whatever generation, be it the Sega Mega Drive or an Xbox 360. Just somehow never had an HDTV internet connection or TV deal of any major description for quite a while. But anyway. As I said, I didn't have any of the things that I would need to, to do it, but he insisted and found a workaround and he said, you know what? what, all you're going to do is buy a headset, download this little thing called Audacity, record things, and I'll put them on the channel myself. I was like, well, I, that's, that's pretty kind of you. That's pretty nice. Even though the content that I ended up making was just me complaining for a fucking living, which one can argue I'm still doing in game form with The Lost, but <laughs> it's neither here nor there. It was really bad. But still, we went through with it. I'd record things on my end, he'd find an acquired gameplay to put with it, and he'd upload it. Again, I was awful at what I was doing, but I was doing something. And I'd just like to take a moment to put this into perspective, because that was my foot in the door of YouTube. Before then, the only interaction I had with YouTube was watching it, believe it or not. I had no aspirations of doing anything on YouTube. I didn't think it'd be something I could access and get anything from or succeed in. At no single point did I ever attempt or plan on making a channel and using it on YouTube until this random Irish individual that I found on Xbox Live while doing a fake accent which was, which was arguably part of the reason he thought I'd be good on YouTube because I, uh... I inflected more with my voice when I was American. I don't know why. If... What I'm, what I'm trying to say is, if all these little planets didn't align in the way that they did, I wouldn't be sat here. If I didn't know what the fuck I was doing with my life, if I... Well, I, maybe I didn't need to join the games course for this to happen, but let's assume that, that was one of the fucking butterfly effects that landed me here. If I was on Xbox Live doing stupid voices, if I wasn't constantly speaking to these people and didn't commit to the idea of pretending to be American for all that time, it wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have ended up being introduced to YouTube and realizing it was something I could do in some capacity. Because over time, after, you know, just being a voice on someone else's channel, a fake voice, haha, I ended up getting the, uh, the money and the equipment and the stuff that I'd need to make my own channel. An awful channel. Oh, you better believe it. And we're gonna go through all the painstaking details of how awful it was. But over time, I ended up getting that, while doing the games course, and then leaving after a year, because despite liking the, the, the course, I didn't like the people I was with. Obviously, barring the, the friends I fucking joined with, that goes without saying, but... The reason I left the course that I was enjoying was because I didn't like the people I was with. I'm not kidding. I was a dumb child. I... Stony... Ugh. That's literally why I, I can't get over that. Just thinking about that now gets me upset. That is the stupidest thing I ever did. But I don't regret it. Because every mistake you make along the road of life paves the path that got you to where you are now. So... I don't regret it. But it's just silly looking back that that's the reason. But yeah, during that course and getting the financial support from the course, because they threw money at you, EMA, I believe. I can't remember how much it was. It was like £30 a week. Somehow. I was able to satiate my need to save for YouTube equipment, like a... Oh, what, what the hell was the name of it? The Hoppage? PVR or something? Hey, I can't remember. Future me, look that up, put it on the screen, laugh at it. Fuck me. I don't want to say it's awful as if it's bad at what it does, but it ain't amazing. Holy shit, I should not have got that. But either way, I somehow saved up enough money with EMA that I was using A for college food and B to go out drinking weekly somehow, I don't know how the fuck. I... <laughs> I don't know how I had a night out with 30 pounds, but I did. And I, I ended up with my own equipment and my own channel that I was making stuff with. And on. And it was awful, because to wrap up the previous story of the Irish community channel, they basically made the smart decision of focusing on their education and, you know, not using the channel. And painfully enough, I finally got all my equipment right as that happened. So I, I always planned on joining them, but by the time I joined them, it was just me. So I, I focused on my channel. However, I did 
take that opportunity to upload a video with with me with, with my real voice and uh that was fun because i didn't explain it i didn't announce it or anything it was like i just had a conversation with them hey do you want me to upload a video on your channel yeah sure and i'm still using my american voice at this point they still think i'm american and then i just upload a video of me being very very prim and proper english that was fun <laughs> That was a fun little revelation they had. So yeah, that was a thing. And I believe I've told those stories around about equally. Because in terms of the timeline, I always forget where my YouTube was in terms of where my education was. It is... I could probably go back and look at the video dates, but that'd spoil it for me. Future me can always go ahead and edit this so I can look dumb by being wrong, but... Right now, I enjoyed the mystery. So, after finally getting my own channel started, and uh, finishing my first year of a games degree, which I quit, and then went on to do a fucking... An electrical installation, BTEC, for two years. No, I'm not turning my nose up with that state bad. It's just worthless on its own. If you don't pursue an apprenticeship afterwards, you can't get a job just with that. Guess what I did? Just that. I'm a clever fucking man. But in those two years, I built up content on my own channel. Awful... Awful content. So you can either jump out and fall to your death, or just die up here with me. Jumping out it is, I see. Tally ho. <laughs> oh. Doesn't get old. Why, why, why? Yeah. Do your ears hurt after that? If your ears don't, your brain is likely bleeding. Awful, awful stuff. For a very long time, I just played Halo, and I was a dick. Can you imagine that? Is what a reach that must be. <laughs> That's a joke, because I also played Hair of the Reach, ha ha ha. <laughs> but I did that for a long time. <laughs> I was not good at it. I was not good at what I did. But I kept doing it. And I think the worst part is, at the time, I thought I was making amazing stuff. That's the wonderful part <laughs> of a lot of this story is, even though now I know I was making garbage at the time, my general perception of my own content at the time was that it was just brilliant. Why wasn't I successful from doing these things? Why weren't people loving me after these videos? You think I'm stupid now? Jesus Christ, I was lobotomized back then. <laughs> but again, I don't regret any of this, because perspective. Every mistake either leads to eventual success or at least teaches you what not to do in the future. Every mistake is valuable. Don't regret your decisions, kids. Every bad one leads to a good one eventually. And no, that's not some you're a special snowflake bullshit, that's just life. <laughs> if you don't fuck up, you'll never improve. And if you're not fucking up, you're not trying. Well, unless you're perfect and you never fuck up, in which case... Well, bravo to you, you lucky prick. I feel like I'm just projecting my frustrations at the time. But yeah, over those two years, I didn't progress all that much. I just... generally enjoyed life with friends, because... To explain a little bit, you know, the the friend that I joined the uh, the game speed tech with naturally continued his course and his education and didn't waste his time and money. I did, but I ended up joining another friend and became incredibly even closer with over those two years. It was fun. I enjoyed the life experiences. I enjoyed the time I spent there, but <laughs> the information I gathered from the course itself <laughs> fucking worthless. I could have you I could have YouTube how to it and learned just as fucking much. And I'm I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. You really could. <laughs> you really could. Granted, that was my free education, but technically I spent money on that shit. Fuck me, I'd like that back. Good God. In terms of YouTube, I don't really think, as I said, I did anything different. I'm pretty sure that I just stuck to Halo for the first year and eventually moved on to... Oh, my proudest achievement. Minecraft. That lighting's rather, uh... <laughs> Doesn't really work. I think I was maybe doing a different game here and there, every now and then, but it was mostly just Minecraft of me being an absolute cock and bollock, being a troll once again, and somehow, because this was on console, these were, like, pretty weird way of wording it, private servers? You know, it was just me hosting it, so people were volunteering for me to be a dick to that it was... <laughs> It's a weird, weird concept that somehow worked in its own little way, on its own scale. I don't know how people were volunteering for me to be a dick to them in Minecraft. 
funnily enough, we've come full circle because now, with me being a prick in the comment section, people are volunteering themselves for me to shout at them. It's an oddly cyclical nature my YouTube career has taken. So, yeah, just to clarify, I think around about the time when I was starting to do Minecraft, I started editing a bit. Just a bit. Not much. Like figuring out I could layer voice effect and pitch shift it to make it sound all scary and shit. It wasn't. And, you know, highly saturating it and over blurring it so it looked awful. And I figured out how to do that. I figured out the basics of being bad. Woohoo for me. And I did tell you, I was gonna ramble a lot and I'd, in, in, I'd in, in, include every single painstaking detail. So, in those three years? Is that right? Good lord. I guess I've been involved in YouTube in some capacity for like five or six years then. My channel hasn't been around that long. My work hasn't, but yeah. Uh, after that, education-wise, I went back and did the games degree. Or B-Tech that I quit, like a clever bastard, because I realized it was the only thing I was moderately good at and was actually interested in. And in terms of YouTube, I regret to inform you I was still doing the same awful garbage. For a really long time, I was doing the same thing and expecting it to do well, even though it was awful. It was awful in every regard, and yet I somehow still expected it to go well. It was an oversaturated medium in terms of Minecraft. It was really obnoxious in the fact that it was me being a troll, and I was bad at what I was doing anyway. Every single thing that could be bad was, and I still expected it to somehow be perceived as good. <laughs> that's, uh, that's probably the worst part about my early YouTube days, being blind to the fact that I was bad and refusing to accept it. Unfortunately, I didn't really learn all too much from YouTube at those stages, because as for the next year of redoing the BTEC for two years, again, I didn't change. I think I adopted GTA 5 content, and again, I was still a dick, being a troll, because I thought I was so fucking unique being that. I don't know why. Like, I think I rationalized it as, oh, there aren't that many popular trolling channels. Not the way I do it. That's because, <laughs> that's because it's naturally bad, and the way I was doing it was even worse. I just didn't realize. Oh, it was fun. So, those two years of uh, YouTube and education are a bit of a blur, because it was me redoing my college stuff, essentially, and not a whole lot of change on the YouTube side. Except for on the tail end of that course, where I fucking finally figured out how fucking cock-gobblingly awful my content was. Fun fact, didn't even refer to it as content at that point. I'm not trying to say there's some kind of benefit or good thing of labeling it as content and not just Let's Plays, but I was unaware of how generally unappealing just Let's Plays were. If you're not adding some different sprinkle of you, or adding something to the style of the way you edit it, it's really not too appealing to a large amount of people. Hence why I was doing YouTube for about three years or four, and I accumulated a grand spanking fucking total of 10,000 subscribers. Now, I'm not telling anybody knows about that, but considering current status, it uh, <laughs> puts it into perspective. But there was a reason that for all that time, I didn't do all that well, because I wasn't all that good until finally at some point, when Dark Souls 2 came around, I realized that all the stuff I'd made before was cock-awful, and I needed to change what I did. Not just game. The game did help. Minecraft and GTA solely was not a good way <laughs> to do anything on YouTube. Let's do the most popular things. A whole bunch. That'll make us unique. Or oh, yeah. I was not a smart child. I'm still not a smart man, but slightly better. But with Dark Souls, I figured I could do something unique. I figured I should approach the game in a different way. I should try to do something that other people weren't doing. And this time I actually did. <laughs> because... <laughs> I don't know how immediately I did this in terms of when I was covering it, but I eventually came to the wonderful conclusion that I should get the game's new game plus 10 and fight bosses with nothing but a broken ladle. <laughs> and he just fucking vinyl record spins on the spot and doesn't give a shit about nobody. What the fuck happened there? God's sake. <laughs> Saying that out loud makes that a lot funnier. <laughs> Jesus. That's what I did. And that's what I was known for for quite a while. And then I translated at the same time also to uh, PvP builds. 
bunnying around fighting unlocked just for a bloody... You gotta be kidding me with this. And that's what I did. And that became relatively successful. Ish. I mean, a hell of a lot more than the previous content. And a hell of a lot more satisfying. And enjoyable for me. Because I was doing something different. I was editing it in, in not amazing ways, comparative to now, but comparative to what I was doing before. Fucking hell. It went from a, a general street urchin painting and creation to a Da Vinci. Good lord. But at the very least, I was enjoying it a lot more. I felt like the content I was doing before, I, I just did for the sake of doing it because it gave me something to do. It wasn't something that I was proud of or something that I myself I, I enjoyed watching. It wasn't something that I would watch, funnily enough. That's the golden rule of YouTube. Make content that you yourself would want to watch. And if you're enjoying making it as fucking well, well, there you go. Golden lining, golden blade is perfect. That's exactly what that content was for me. It was something I'd want to watch, it's something that I did watch, and it's something I loved making. Thank fuck for that, I finally came to the conclusion that you should enjoy what you make if you're intending for it to be entertaining for others. It's a bit of a fucking tell you're doing things right and not awfully wrong. But, yeah, throughout all of that, throughout all that Dark Souls series, I'm pretty sure that's all I did for quite a while, it was just that game and nothing else. And after that, fast forwarding a bit, I believe the next meaningful thing that I did was, uh... Shadow of Mordor. <laughs> yeah, and then I bounced between Shadow of Mordor stuff and Dark Souls PvP because I'm, I, I did all the ladle stuff. There's nothing more for me to do, so I just did PvP videos over and over again, which were really fun to make, even though they were arguably, arguably, let's speak English, a little bit repetitive in nature, but they were still enjoyable and. A lot of people want well, considering the the scale of my channel as I am, a lot of people watch them. And I was proud of that stuff. Still. Moving swiftly on. This is supposed to focus on my experiences with YouTube and how I accidentally came to be here, because funnily enough, despite the fact I've spoken for god knows how long at this point, the main story of this, the main focus and progression, is still coming up. Granted, you've got to enjoy all the backstory and all the how I accidentally fell into this potential of the job by being a dumb kid that made dumb voices online and ended up finding a couple of Irish guys that had a channel that introduced me to it. Which again is ridiculous because I had no intention of ever being involved in YouTube in any capacity and yet still somehow thanks to that I am. <laughs> Even with that being ridiculous, the main story of this is actually a little bit later on because all that I believe was during the game BTEC and I finished that up and started the game's degree. This is where I got rather upset at myself. Now, I will say again, every mistake leads to an inevitable success, however, I do believe this is the one mistake I didn't need to make. It might have given me a little bit more clear perspective of how much I wanted to do this, but... <sighs> the several thousand pounds I lost... <laughs> a little bit pissed about that. I would have liked to have saved that. But to explain properly, I naturally progressed from the BTEC into the degree. That cost you some money and moolah, believe it or not. Six thousand pounds, to be precise. Although it's not precise, because that's estimated and roughly. It's close enough to... I think it's a little bit more. But yeah, it's that much a year for the game's degree, which I was... not 100% sold on doing, but I... I, I didn't have that much to do YouTube-wise. Like, at the time, I was probably making... Uh, 200 pounds a month? Now, that's not bad. I'm not turning my nose up at that. But my point is, I couldn't just say, fuck it, I'll live off YouTube. Couldn't live off that. Couldn't. <laughs> to give you perspective of how much money I was making, by the way, it would have been like 15 fucking pence a month back in the Halo days, about 15 pounds a month in the Minecraft days, and right about the Dark Souls started up, eh, about 50. So I'm not turning my nose with that, but just to give you some perspective of how much I was making, it was cool, it was fun. I never did it for the money, it was just always a cool little incentive, like, oh, I can buy a game a month thanks to this money. What do I do? Play games for a living. That's pretty fitting. That was always interesting, like trying to break even with how many games I could buy in, in a month. Didn't, didn't usually work. November is a nightmare for that. Ugh, that would have been impossible. <laughs> like fucking ten games coming out in a week. But anyway, seeing as I couldn't live off YouTube and I had no other job because... I always rationalised it as, No, no, I'm, I'm a student, I don't need to do it, I, I'm, I'm doing this. The truth is that I was lazy and didn't want to do a real job, and that's the truth. Didn't much like to admit it at the time, <laughs> but that was the truth. 
Didn't much like the idea of stacking shelves on my dailies. I much preferred the idea of being a silly, lazy, shithead student. And that's me describing myself. <laughs> not the average student. It's not a knock. It's just me. It's exactly what I was. So, I joined the games degree, and within all of a month, I realized this was a mistake. <laughs> because... <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Within, like, the first fucking month of that fucking course, did my YouTube channel start doing significantly better. If it isn't clear enough, maybe I, I, I don't do a good enough job explaining things. You know, the course ends in, like, June, and it starts at the beginning of September, and there's a bunch of months in between. Nothing happened in those, in those months between, but as soon as I set foot back in that fucking building, <laughs> right then was when YouTube started getting a lot better for me. Now, I can't remember what it was that caused it. I'm trying to think, but I, there's nothing coming to mind that really blew up that was obvious to me. I, re I remember at the time, I was probably like starting to do the Binding of Isaac stuff, not in the way you see today, I was just doing that for fun. Funnily enough, when I started Binding of Isaac, nobody gave a shit. It was something I was doing for my, my own enjoyment, as opposed to the audiences. Well, <laughs> it wasn't as if they didn't, but it wasn't as popular as the things I was doing. Um, I think I was probably doing Dark Souls Scholar of the First Sin? And other things like that, I believe. Probably wrong. I don't know. I was doing things like that. Again, I, 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 there was nothing notable that came along that really blew up. It was just, in general, there was more interest in what I was doing, because I was getting better at it, because I was learning how to edit properly. I was learning how to be funny and not stupid and not obnoxious, and how to present my content and how to make thumbnails that were a little bit better, a little bit more appealing. I still think my thumbnail styles now could do with improving, but people keep saying how unique it is and how it's immediately identifiable, so I don't want to fuck with it. Or at least not much, anyway. Seemingly at the time there was nothing that specifically new that I was doing that caused it, but there was a bunch of interest, and I just spent £6,000 essentially, even though I didn't need it right then and there, you just owe it in the future, I essentially spent £6,000 for the realisation of, oh... I don't want to do this for a living. Like, I'm not that good at it. I've already found something that I'm supposedly good at, and I want to pursue that. I figured that out in my first month. But the course started in September, and I just kept on doing it until... Oh, until the end of the... Well, not end of the, the, the college or university year, the end of just the, cal the calendar year. And I did it up until Christmas, and I got to the break, and YouTube was doing very well. Very, very well. Comparative to what it was. Like a couple of months ago. I mean, I think I went from something like 10,000 subscribers? This might be wrong, I really wish I could go back and check, but I don't know where I can check, specifically how many subscribers I had at a certain date. Wait, actually, yes I do, hang on. I went ahead and checked my analytics page and I forgot I could pick the dates. In September 2014, I had 18,000, roughly, 18,000 subscribers. That's pretty goddamn good at the time, because as I said, it took a while to get there. It took fucking four, three to four years to get to that point. And by December, I fucking doubled that. I had 38,000. In those fucking, in those months of me committing my life, technically, and 6,000 fucking pounds to a degree, I realized I didn't need it. You, you. You can't believe how frustrating that is, and how annoyed at myself I was. I mean, my god. What a fucking brilliant time for that to happen. I'm not, again, I'm not regretting it, because it... All the life lessons that I got throughout all that, because here's, here's the point. During that time, of me being really conflicted of what the, the dumbest decision I made, I, I realized how much I wanted to do this. Just this. Nothing else. I mean, you know, vary it up and do different elements of this, but you know what I mean? I just realized in that time how much I wanted to commit all of what I could to this. To making people laugh on a platform that's accessible to plenty of people. And in that short amount of time of me getting a lot more attention for doing things right at last, after so many years of doing them horribly fucking wrong, both on YouTube and not, by the way, it made me smile. Yeah, I was I was frustrated at the fact that I wasted a lot of money in time, but again, I got the perspective a little bit sooner, right? a little bit later, why can I not brain? That you shouldn't regret the things you do, because they get you to where you are. And if you at any point end up where you want to be, all the things that you did that didn't get you there, technically still got you there. Even if it set you back, it doesn't matter. 
If you still get to where you want to be, all those mistakes you made give you perspective. They taught you something. At the very least, they taught you that you're stupid and you need to fucking get smarter. Speaking from personal experience. Yeah, as soon as I stepped foot into the university, I, I realized... One, that I was able to do this as a job, two, that I wanted to, and three, that arguably if I wanted to be happy and smile, I needed to. So in that Christmas break, I realized... Well, I, I actually didn't. Fun fact. Actually, why don't I tell this in order? In the Christmas break, I was realizing that I didn't want to do that course anymore. It wasn't... It wasn't ticking the right boxes for me. It wasn't rubbing me the right way. Matter of fact, it wasn't rubbing me in any way. It just wasn't engaging for me. The stuff that we were doing... Just to explain the course, because I guess a lot of people might not even know what the game's the design and development degree would be. It's a, generally a jack-of-all-trades thing. They teach you everything. You don't just walk up and say, I want to be a 3D model, and you do that. Because honestly, that would be awkward as fuck to organize. I understand that. But, you know, if you're going for this game's d development degree thing, it's literally an element of everything. You have to do all these things, and you become a jack-of-all-trades and a master of fuck all when just applying yourself to the course, so in your spare time you just commit all your effort and energy to one element of it, but you have to do so much more that is not that. That was one of the main reasons. I enjoyed certain elements of it, but the overall I couldn't fucking bear. So, January 21st to 24th, can't remember, one of those, I get them mixed up, first day back in university. I'm just sitting there. I'm just looking at my YouTube page, because, you know, you use a computer to fucking work, it's right there. I don't know if there was a lecture going on, if I was being a really ignorant prick, or if it was just a general... Like, the usual beginning of the day, we just gather around and talk about shit, because I think they were explaining what we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester. I was just sat there, looking at my YouTube page, thinking, I can live off these earnings now. <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's what I can do. I don't need this anymore, and I want to do that. I just kept saying, I can't remember what it was I was saying. I think I kept saying, I think I'm done, over and over. I <laughs> probably came across really fucking creepy and weird, just sitting there saying it to myself over and over again. I had this realization. I didn't need to be there. If I didn't want to be, I'm a grown man, making my own decisions, I pay my taxes, I pay my bills, fuck you, I'll stay up late if I want. John Tron joke. Rip off. Doing it again. <laughs> but still, I just didn't want to be there, so I decided, fuck it, I'm not gonna be. I respectfully waited until the end of whatever the hell thing it was we were doing. I was waiting until they were done, walked outside, got to the tutor and said, Hey, I think my wording was, how do I leave the course? <laughs> Which is probably a moment where he realized, oh, what did I do wrong? But that was it. That was, that was my final interaction with the course. However, despite the fact that I only completed one semester, I was charged for both. I was rather upset about that. If I, I, I'd like to think that if I had actually quit during the break and didn't go back in and fucking uh, logged in for that semester, I would have been charged for it. But oh well, whatever. <laughs> 36 grand. It's <laughs> a brilliant financial decision. But again, I regret nothing. Because as soon as I left, I uh, committed a lot more time to this. And I went from doing one video a day to two, I believe. Oh no, actually, tell a lie. I started doing two videos a day on the 10th of January, sometime in that month, I think it was the 10th, and I realized how much I enjoyed doing it, committing that much time to it, how, how much I wanted to do, nothing but that. I believe it was the two videos a day thing that really put the exclamation mark on how much I wanted to do that and nothing but that. And now I'm here. Because in that time from January 21st or 4th, all the way to now, it was just a learning experience of what I wanted to do, what I wanted to focus on, how I wanted to make my content. I can't remember when it was specifically, because every day feels like a blur, because I barely leave the house because I'm working here every goddamn day, I have no life outside this. That may sound sad, but fuck it, I like it that way. Because seriously, from January to like maybe June, I didn't see anyone. I didn't see any of my friends. And if like Luke finally came around and visited me, I was like, hey, kind of miss this, we should make this regular. We didn't, until recently. But, because I was just focusing so much on, where well, this, work. Making good stuff for you, for me, actually. Here's a fun fact. Plenty of people, I mean, I, I said it myself, I, I got into this job, well, I ended up being invested in this job, because I liked making people laugh. But the reason I get better at it, is for more of a selfish reason. It's because I want to be good at what I do. And if we're being completely honest, <laughs> it's because I want to be better than everybody else. There's no competition on YouTube when it comes to... You, you can't mention other channels, you can't promote them, because promoting other channels doesn't negatively affect you. Someone having a bigger number than me doesn't make their content better. 
all the respect due because he makes good stuff for people that enjoy it. My content's better than PewDiePie's. This isn't a knock, this isn't a jab, this isn't an arrogant stance. Production value-wise, my content is better. Tomato Gaming's is better. Fuck, I'd argue his is better than mine sometimes. Most times, actually. And I'm not trying to say that to be like, Oh, I'm better than PewDiePie. Who fucking cares? My point is, the main reason that I'm always trying to improve this show, channel, whatever, in any way that I can is because it's for me. It's to satiate my own desire of being good at what I do and being better at what I do on a regular basis because I had the realization that it took me four fucking years to even attempt to improve. And that was a very small improvement. Very small. So now I regularly try to see how I can improve things. And then every now and then there was a little bit of a, a road bump. A road bump? A speed bump. Bump in the road, fuck up, pothole. Like, I remember sometime in the summer I took a major break. Mainly because life was beating me down. And I wasn't too happy in general. It was nothing to do with the channel or work or anything. It was just, I don't know, I was got a little bit moody. Family stuff. Yeah, it happens. And I bounced back. And I believe around then, I believe, was when I realised I wanted to focus more, co uh, bleh, more effort on individual videos. Because at that point I think I was still doing two a day. I think. I can't remember when I dropped the two a day thing, but I realised that quality matters more than quantity. Even though the YouTube algorithm begs to differ by fucking fondling the bollocks of everyone that just throws up uploads, hence why cancerous channels like The Reactionist's Jinx are so successful, stealing other people's fucking content and making money off of it, the scammy fucks. I could make a, I could make a whole video complaining about that, and I, I, I just might, I just might treat you to me screaming about those infectious little cancerous fuckboys stealing other people's work and making money off of it. Seriously, you have profited off of other people's work and not properly accommodated them for that. In short, fuck you. In not so short, fuck you and every single thing about you. But anyway, we're trying to be positive. What the fuck was I even saying before that I've completely forgotten? Oh, that was it. The, the YouTube algorithm being an absolute dog shit bitch that, that just gives people that throw out content more attention. I didn't care about that. I just wanted to make videos that were better. I wanted to make every single video special. That's why I don't do a Christmas special or a 100,000 video, 100,000 video, 100,000 subscriber special. Because those videos don't feel special. Because if you're putting more work into those and not the rest, you're doing something wrong. Or at least, I need to be doing something wrong. Because at no point do I end me editing a video or an editing session with the words, eh, it'll do. At no point. I want everything that I make to be worth watching. I... Sounds obvious. Sounds like it would go without saying, but... I don't know. I think when I started investing a lot more time, like say, five to ten hours editing each video, roughly every video, so I started enjoying this a lot more again. I started realizing how fun it was. Almost as if it wasn't for a while when I was just focusing on having to do so many things a day. I mean, it sounds bad, but... <laughs> you know, when I dropped the schedule, even though that was kind of bad for you because you got less stuff, I enjoyed it more. It gave me more time to work on things. I worked on things when I wanted to, not as if I was being lazy and didn't want to, but, you know, if you're not creatively charged, if you're not in the, a good mood, if you're not awake and aware and alert, you, well, at least for me, videos end up worse. You just miss creative opportunities because you didn't realise they were there to begin with because the right lights weren't on and the right switches weren't flipped. <laughs> for a very weird way of wording it. I'd like to think that's why my content has got better recently. Because I remember specifically, I don't remember the name of it, at least I, I, I want to try and remember it, but I remember, I remember specifically that I'm going to find it and link it and throw it up here on annotation. The video where I realised that I wanted to put a lot more effort into each individual video. Overreact like, uh, a Five Nights at Freddy's enthusiast. My son! What the fuck?! Ah! And it shows. Because, one, that video was a lot better quality-wise, and it's called a fuck ton of views. Point is, the more effort I put into a video, the more I enjoy this job. So if I'm just putting out content for the sake of adding another fucking digit to my video counter, it's, 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 it's not fun. It's not. The entire thing I enjoy about this is the creative side of it and trying to do different things. Ish. Sort of. Says the man who plays The Binding of Isaac all the fucking time, which is funnily enough, <laughs> the next talking point I want to get to. Because if you didn't notice, not that it was actually intentional to begin with, but it is now, 
this channel's kind of gone in cycles. Even the bad ones, you know. Halo, Minecraft, GTA, Dark Souls, Shadow of Mordor, arguably, and then now The Binding of Isaac. And see, the thing is, I feel like this cycle of The Binding of Isaac has gone on a bit too long. Now, I'm sure everyone is about to type, well, I would say everyone, I mean like three people that are still watching this shit, are probably typing up a storm. No, don't stop doing The Binding of Isaac. I'm not going to. You see, the cycles have always been me just focusing on things. Now? This isn't New Year, New Me, or some bullshit resolution. If you need the calendar to roll over for you to make a change, you're living life wrong. It just happens to have coincided perfectly. <laughs> when I finally decided I wanted to do more variety. A, 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 a lot more. Because there there's a handful of series I'm still doing, like Fallout and Super Mario 64 Chaos. I'm still doing those. But I want to do different things. You know, I'm not saying I'm never doing Bind the Magic again. I'll probably do it every now and then, like maybe every week or so. I don't care. I'll still make it. But I don't want to do it like every other day. I'm so tired of that game. It's a good game and I enjoy it. I fucking love playing it. But here's the thing. I fucking made 100 videos on that thing. Do you have any idea how fucking hard it is to come up with new jokes for the same game? It's challenging enough with new games. Never mind the same one. So... What I'm trying to say is, you can expect more variety from me, hopefully. There are a bunch of games I want to play that have been on my to-do list for a while, and there are just games that I'm going to discover and think, hey, that'll be funny, I'm going to play it. Mainly because, as I said, I like being creative, and it's hard to create something new with something that's getting old. So yeah, I'm looking at my recording right now, and it's gone for an hour. I don't know if I'm going to trim the fat, or if I'm just going to keep this... As it is, either way, I wanted to upload something like this, because I like the talking videos. As you can clearly tell, I've been speaking for a fucking hour. If I didn't like talking, it would have been a miracle that I made it here. So to recap, it's a miracle that I fell into this job. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate what I've got. And if, if I wasn't a dumb kid making dumb voices on Xbox Live, and I didn't bump into a bunch of Irish kids, I wouldn't be here. That's insane. That is... Truly insane. And the fact that I have multiple times doubled my subscriber count in such a short amount of time. Back in 2014, when September to December I doubled my subscriber count. How? I couldn't tell you. I don't know. <laughs> and then I went from like 50,000 to 100,000 pretty soon, then 100,000 to 200, and 200 to 3. I don't... I don't know how I did that. <laughs> well, I do, kinda. From promoting Tomato Gaming, and then him doing that for me too. The same with Cory Kenshin. I guess that's something I forgot to speak about, actually. The whole promoting other content creators. I can probably just slip that in right at the end here. It's really easy to explain. So many times you hear from other content creators, like I'd watch the Creature talk. I almost said Creature Hub. Like, there was a Creature talk where they were talking about how impossible it seems to be for new content creators to get into this because it's like an impossible barrier of entry. And the reason for that is it's so oversaturated that you can never find the good stuff. Hey, here's an idea. Why don't we find the good stuff and then talk about it and promote it? You know, the thing I've been doing, and it's massively, positively affected a lot of channels? Like, it's, it's so simple and it's so easy. It requires like 10 seconds of saying, hey, this guy's good, I like him, go watch him. <laughs> that's how I end all my videos now. And thanks to me doing that with Tomato Gaming, I think that's why my subscribers doubled so fucking quickly. Thanks to him. And I said, the same with Cory Kenshin and Admiral Baru. It's a fucking simple thing to do of ending your video promoting someone else. It's not hard. I don't want to come across pushy or dickish, but it's painful how obviously good this is to do and how so few fucking people do it. <laughs> but whatever. You know, I've just put I've just put this like really brilliant message at the end of an hour long video no one's going to watch. So it's just, it's just me speaking to myself at this point. I could I could say Hitler was a brilliant man and no one even fucking know. <laughs> I don't think he is, for the one person still listening, <laughs> if that wasn't obvious. But yeah, I guess I should end this with a just general massive thank you for anyone who made it to this, and just a massive thank you to everyone who's subscribed to this dumb shit. Everyone who watches stuff that isn't just The Binding of Isaac, for one thing. I love you a whole bunch. Thank you for coming here for me, and not a game. <laughs> Thank you for thinking that I have the capacity to make things entertaining past the point of gimmicks. Thank you. And I guess I should say you can 
look forward to a plethora of bullshit in the future. I mean, Dark Souls 3's coming out. If that's got a brother of Blood Arena again, goddamn, we're gonna have a blast with that. That could be the next cycle of the channel. So yeah, again, thank you all for getting me to where I am. Don't regret your mistakes because they help you more than you will ever know. And I would end this with stay in school, kids, but that did not work out that well for me, so hey. <laughs> I'm not about to advocate the idea of dropping out and wasting six grand. But I will say, if you're passionate and you believe in yourself and what you're doing, you should, you should take the risk. It paid off for me, and I know I'm in the minority for that, but... If you're passionate and you're good at something and you want to do that, do that. Because there's the cliche we should end it on. It ain't the decisions and the mistakes that you make that you regret. It's the ones you don't. We got any more cliches? Not the only fish in the sea? It's not the end of the world? Anything? Alright. Is it obvious I don't know how to end this?